So, welcome to another episode of Saleable, an offshoot of the Wedding Film School Show. My name is Jared Haskell, and I'm the co-owner of several wedding film brands, including Stop Go Love Film and Photo, Merriment Films, Huxley Films, and Outpost Studios, which is our outsourcing company. Um, if you can't tell, I like to start companies, and specifically, I love wedding film companies because, honestly, I still love doing wedding films. I love the wedding industry and uh, everything that we get to do uh, being a part of that. And uh, nowadays, though, I mostly do sales for these companies. And the point of this podcast is to both help wedding filmmakers like yourself generate more leads and get more high-paying wedding jobs. Um, this is the second episode of Saleable, but if you like this version of the Wedding Film School show, then you'll love our traditional podcast, and you can find it wherever you can find podcasts, as well as over on our YouTube channel if you just search for the Wedding Film School show. So, how's everyone's 2023 going? Um, if you're anything like me, I started the year feeling pretty pessimistic, uh, just with everything that's going on in the world. Um, and honestly, a big part of me still is a little bit pessimistic. Um, let me explain why. Uh, I recently got an email from The Wedding Report, who we follow pretty closely because they always seem to have just an awesome pulse on what's going on in the wedding industry and where we're headed. And I'd recommend you go over there and check them out. It's a little bit of money, but for us, totally worth uh, the small expense to just get really good data. Um, anyhow, this email announced some pretty interesting news. Uh, the main point was that it appeared that couples would be reducing guest counts and their budgets by 10 to 25% in 2023. Um, so that initial question got me asking, why is this happening? And, you know, we could dive into and speculate about all the microeconomics, inflation, the pandemic, whatever, all these things. Uh, but regardless of why, it's one of those things that just kind of is out of our control, right? Of course, these things aren't 100%, but here's why I think it matters for wedding filmmakers, whether or not we go into a soft landing, stagflation, a deep recession, or even if things start to spike upwards, it's still going to have an effect on our industry. And even if you don't believe that we are in some way, shape, or form uh, on the way towards any kind of correction, we're already into the heavy booking season, or heavy booking season uh, in many parts of the country, right? So how are your numbers looking? Are they down compared to 2022? Uh, I saw a comment in our Facebook uh, group today about how their web traffic was down and they thought it was leading into their bookings being down across the board. And honestly, as someone who gets 1,200 leads last year, um, I'm seeing it happen to all of our brands as well. So uh, what's the deal? Personally, I think it's a combination of a few things, but the main thing is how people are feeling about their money right now. I heard an interesting saying a while ago, and I, I love this saying, uh, and I totally copy and repeat it to rich dads at weddings nowadays, so I sound smarter than I am, but uh, it's that the uh, markets and the stock markets are really just a graph of rich people's feelings. So, uh, and, and that's always something that I've really loved because it's so true, and it really emphasizes how our economy works. How people feel affects their spending habits, especially when it comes to considering a wedding film and just a wedding in general and where they're gonna put their money. So let's just quickly take a peek at the markets. I'm gonna look at my laptop here. It seems like the S&P 500 compared to last year, uh, last year was up to about 4,500. Um, this year it's down to about 4,100 and change. So a little bit of a dip in the S&P 500 compared to last year. However, it is kind of trending upwards. Uh, if we go over to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ was up to about 1,400 or four, I'm sorry, 14,000 last year. And now it's down to 11,800. Again, that's kind of ramping up a little bit lately. Um, and then lastly, over to the Dow Jones, uh, this was at 35,000 last February of 2022. This year, it looks like we are around 34,000, um, you know, so that is a very small dip, and it seems like the Dow Jones is kind of leveling off, but regardless, that's kind of where people are, and it in general feels like people aren't super down on the markets, but they're also not super up on the markets, not super high on the markets, although we are seeing a little bit of an upward trend. Um, either way, people seem to be a little bit gun shy because they don't know where we are currently heading, right? 
Okay, so I want to kind of break this thing down and, and really talk about what this could mean for wedding filmmakers compared to even the rest of the wedding film industry because I think it could harm wedding filmmakers even more than other people in our industry. So if we were to really build out the hierarchy of, you know, who's at the top of the wedding kind of food chain, uh, who gets paid the most, who gets booked first, let's talk about this first tier of wedding professionals, which at the very top, you got to put the wedding planner, right? Most of the times, if a couple's going to hire a wedding planner, they are going to do so uh, first and foremost, because this person is going to guide them even through the venue selection process. How many planners do you know that will walk their couples through multiple venues and they're on the clock at that point to just walk around, schmize, smile, and break in money, right? Um, we as wedding filmmakers do not have that luxury. So the wedding planner by far top of the food chain, they are the lion or lioness, uh, up there. And right after that, I would probably place the venue, right? The place where they actually have to have the wedding, uh, it's pretty important to get booked first and foremost. And really after you book your venue, all these other dominoes can fall into place. Um, and then the third person I would say in this kind of platinum realm of wedding uh, vendor is going to be the caterer, right? You have to eat at these weddings, Other pay, otherwise people are gonna be pissed off. Uh, so these three really help the rest of the wedding planning process kind of fall into place afterwards. And you can't really make decisions down the line until these three items are booked. If you choose to have a wedding planner, not everyone obviously has a wedding planner. Some people will go with the venue and uh, they get a coordinator with that. Some people uh, have caterers that are a part of the venue. So there's a little bit of overlap here, but this is kind of your platinum first step that people are going to take. After that, we get into the next tier of wedding professional, which is going to be the photographer, right? How many times have you been booked as a videographer? How, how many times have you been booked after the photographer? It's almost every single time. On rare occasions, we'll be booked before the photographer and we're asked about recommendations. But for the most part, the photographer is going to be booked before you. Sorry, dude. Uh, the next one is going to be the dress. This is partially because they are simply, they have to get booked much before the photographer because it takes so long to get a dress. Um, and get it altered and make sure things are perfect. Um, so it's a little bit a um, uh, circumstantial kind of event getting a dress. Uh, it's not that it's necessarily more important, but they do get paid before you and me. And then the third person in this tier, of course, is going to be a florist. And usually people are gonna be spending big money on a florist. Uh, whether or not you and I like that decision, it's just kind of what it is. Most people want flowers. It's a wedding. They expect flowers. Um, and then the third tier, I would put three different people. I'm going to put these people in the silver kind of uh, uh, category. And that, of course, is going to be a band, a DJ, and then, hey, you and me, the wedding filmmaker, will be in this third tier of vendor. And then after that, why don't we just make a bronze, you know, kind of realm, which is really everyone else. We'll push photo booth. We'll push, you know, uh, invitations, everything else into this category, because frankly, everything else doesn't necessarily have to be at a wedding, uh, where I think the first three tiers are going to be at a vast majority of weddings. So my question is then, if people are forced to cut one of these services, which is the most expendable, right? If videography is typically 5% of a couple's budget uh, and their overall budget is being cut by 10 to 25% according to the wedding report, who do you think is at the most risk of being on the chopping block? Personally, I'm hoping for the best, of course. I wanna be optimistic, uh, but I think a smart business person uh, should also be planning for the worst. You know, we just had a pandemic hit the entire globe. Who is ready for that? Nobody. I want to be ready for whatever comes my way. So um, I'm going to right now kind of give my five tips for preparing for a recession because you never know. These are just good principle as a business owner. And number one on this list is going to be 
know your numbers. Uh, getting your numbers under control, it really allows you to take control of your business and make better financial decisions. And at the end of the day, probably make more money. Uh, if you're wasting money in whatever areas, this is the most important time to know about it, right? Um, so how do you do that? I have three different areas, actually probably four different areas. Uh, the first one is going to be for you to get QuickBooks. Guys, if you don't already have QuickBooks, um, I don't know what you're doing listening to my podcast right now. <laughs> you should be getting QuickBooks, getting on there and getting yourself organized. Just playing. You, you could probably listen to this podcast at the same time as you're going through your numbers. Uh, hopefully, that's the whole point of this podcast is to listen while you're doing work. Uh, but guys, getting QuickBooks is just going to set you up. Uh, you know, a lot of times you can link up your bank account so that you, all your expenses are already in there and you just have to categorize them. And that way, when you send out all your expenses, either to your accountant or if you're doing the numbers yourself, um, it's super duper easy to just get really organized. And then the second thing under knowing your numbers is planning a budget. When you plan a budget and you execute on a budget, I can tell you there's really not a lot more satisfying things as a business owner when you're able to be like, hey, you know what? I was actually pretty close on these numbers. As a number, as a non-numbers person, I would say myself, um, even I can do this, guys. It's very easy, and it just allows you to get, again, that uh, much more organized in your business and be able to plan things out for the future. And someone who can actually look into the future and plan your business as a person who actually moves their business forward. If you're just wishy-washy about just, you know, hey, I'm just going to take the opportunities as they come, um, you're not going to get very far. You're going to get overwhelmed because you're not planning ahead. A budget allows you to plan ahead a little bit about the growth of your business. Um, so number two is get a budget. And if you have QuickBooks, it's a lot easier to get a budget going, right? Because you can see what you spent last year. And I would say do that. Look at your last year, see how much you spent last year on certain things, and use that as a baseline for your budget moving forward. Number three under uh, Know Your Numbers is uh, to learn accounting. Just learn basic tips of the trade. Um, and this one's a little bit tricky because there are, of course, full-time people who only do accounting, and you cannot expect for yourself to be uh, at their level of an accountant. Um, I'm not saying become an accountant, right? I'm saying know how to become better at accounting. There's tons of YouTube videos out there about how you can just save on basic things like taxes. Uh, one thing that you can do is structuring your business the right way so you pay less taxes. If you are an S Corp, uh, for instance, like our company, you spend uh, less money on taxes and you spend more money on your own pocket and <laughs> into your own wallet. So there's a bunch of little things that you can do. I would say, you know, I could do a whole other podcast on this most likely, even though I'm not really much of an accountant. Uh, I still know uh, about 50% of what my accountant knows at least, um, just so you can even ask the right questions to an accountant, which kind of leads me into my fourth point, which is, get a pro, you know, if you are just terrible at all of this stuff and you can afford it, go out there, get an accountant, get someone to help you with your numbers, uh, get a team member who knows a lot more than you. It's going to save you a lot of time so you can do the things that you love to do, which is hopefully creating good wedding films, right? So number two under my tips for preparing for a recession is become lean. If you think that there's going to be a dip ahead, which I I think there's probably going to be a dip of about 20% of the whole market uh, in 2023, just people doing less weddings in general. Um, it's a good year to really cut back and make yourself super lean, mean, and tough. So how are some ways that you can do this? Just off the top of my head, I can think of a few. One is that this might not be the best year to upgrade your gear. Uh, it's hard for me to say because I am totally a gearhead. Uh, I have gear acquisition syndrome more than men, most <laughs> wedding filmmakers out there. Um, so it's a hard one for me to say because I love acquiring more stuff. I'm interested in it. And, uh, you know, this year probably isn't the biggest year for us. We're probably going to cut our spending uh, by about at least two thirds compared to what we spent last year. Um, and so I just look at it and I say, hey, you know, if we have a decent year next year, we can always push that stuff down the road. Do I really need to upgrade to a brand new camera body? 
Or can I get away with what we currently have? Or maybe can I just get away with buying one body instead of multiple bodies? A bunch of questions for you to be asking yourself. Um, the next thing is to ask yourself, and the next thing to ask yourself is really going to be, should I be expanding this year? Expanding oftentimes costs money, it costs time. Um, and so this is a way that you can probably cut back um, because the opportunity um, might not be there this year. Uh, and when I say expand, you know, there's a bunch of different ways you can expand. You can expand by offering, you know, more services. You can uh, expand by, you know, for instance, we bought a photo booth last year, a second photo booth. Um, so that we could just take on more volume. Um, things like that, that, you know, maybe you think the opportunities are going to be there in 2023. They might not be, and it might be a good time to just hold back, be conservative with your spending and look forward to next year, see how things are going. Um, and then the last thing is like expanding staff. If you are planning on growing your business by hiring somebody, it might be a year to reconsider that choice for yourself. I know a staff member and and really staff members are the biz, biggest expense of most companies out there. Um, so as soon as you bring someone on, you're not just paying them, you know, their hourly rate, you also have to think about employee taxes, you're going to pay a lot more in taxes. Um, they're going to require potentially uh, benefits as well. So there's all these kind of unforeseen expenses. It's not just sticker price, there's a bunch of things baked in there as well. Um, and also if there's less work in 2023, do you really need to hire an extra person or two to help you out? Um, I would also say, you know, even as someone who has an outsourcing company, um, to consider if you could just handle more things yourself, um, you know, sucks. A lot of us want to do less work or less of the work that we don't want to do, uh, for a lot of people that might be editing. Um, but moving forward, it might make sense for you to do the work again for another year, get your systems ready so that you can pass that off to another person in 2024. Um, and tip number three is going to be um, shore up your relationships. And what kind of relationships am I talking about? Really, anyone in the industry who can get you work and make you money, right? Um, so this can be wedding planners, it can be photographers, it can be anyone who you have a relationship with, shoring those up and just galvanizing those relationships, making sure that no one else is getting in there good with the planner that you've worked with a bunch, um, just making yourself invaluable to those people. So there's a couple different ways you can do that. Obviously, the easiest way is sending a text message, an email, just checking up on people, seeing you know how they're doing, also seeing how their wedding season is going, if, if there's anything that you can do to help them push their business forward, um, and really just having friendship, you know, basic friendship, asking them how their wedding season is going, if they're noticing a dip in their numbers in general. The best way to just get conversations going is by asking questions. So get out there, ask questions, and then you can find out how you can service your wedding friends a lot better, right? Um, another thing that you can do if you really want to be a kiss ass is get out there, send gifts to people that you appreciate them. Um, even just little, you know, notes and, and that kind of stuff really goes a long way in the industry. And oftentimes we don't think about it because we're so freaking busy most of the time, but it really does go a long way. It really solidifies a lot of friendships. Um, and I'll just reiterate this cause I already talked about it a little bit, but just giving service to people asking if there's like a little video that you can do for one of your planners, or maybe you're putting together some social media edits for them. This is an easy way guys if you have the time for a lot of us it's a slow part of the year we're in february now if you have the time do service for people it really goes such a long way to make sure that they are hiring you for multiple weddings in the future and we've done this for a number of planners in our area just like a little thing having a little bit of a social strategy for a planner we, one of our planners has booked us for about 12 weddings this year. She just calls us up, lists all of the weddings, what their budgets are, and we write the contracts 10 at a time sometimes for this planner. So I know from experience, this stuff works. Um, also, if you have to bribe people, I'm not opposed to it either. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
ask how you can serve the people. That's the main takeaway from this one. Number four is uh, expand your offerings, uh, potentially uh, gain new skills. I know I said uh, two tips ago to maybe not expand your offerings, especially if you're having to spend money on those offerings. But if you, this is just a service thing and you're going to have more time on your hands, uh, potentially getting into the commercial world is uh, an opportunity for you potentially. Um, so doing something a little bit different, uh, I would say the best kind of opportunity are opportunities that are also in the wedding world. So a venue that might want a video for their website uh, and are willing to spend money, um, that's a good opportunity. Maybe some bakeries, maybe some um, cake companies, maybe even a photographer that's willing to spend 500 bucks on some social media video type stuff. Um, that stuff can really go um, a long way in keeping you busy and just paying the bills as you're trying to make up for lost work and lost opportunity. Um, so that's another thing. Uh, again, partners in the industry, uh, additional video service to current clients as well. Go back into your client list from 2022 and ask them if they want you to do maybe a ceremony edit or toasts or dances. Adding on services to people that you've already worked with, they already trust your work. Um, reach out to past brides and grooms and see if they would want additional work. I can say that we do probably an additional forty to fifty thousand dollars a year on just uh, post wedding work every single year in our slow season. We're doing a lot of post production for people simply because we reach out and we build it into our pre wedding. Uh, conversations with a bride and a groom and we kind of condition them to get ready to spend after the wedding and we mention it to them over and over and over again so once they see potential an opportunity for something they automatically think about it we don't have to sell them anymore we already have pre-conditioned them to know that this is an option for them so this is another thing to be thinking about and just as a simple good business plan uh, I would recommend people do that all the time, no matter if we're in recession or not. So, and then lastly, number five, and this is the final tip that I'll give you today is uh, learn how to wheel and deal, uh, become a closer. And I like this phrase. Uh, and if you listen to the Wedding Film School show, you know that um, I really like baseball. We make a lot of baseball references. And if you don't like baseball, the gentleman's game, then uh, I don't care. You can get the hell out and go watch your football or, you know, uh, rugby, whatever it is that you're into. Baseball is a gentleman's game. And there's plenty, plenty of life experiences that you can learn through baseball. And the main thing that I would say you should learn uh, and, and the analogy that I'll make to baseball is find your fucking fastball, bro. When it comes to selling, find what works. Find what gets people it's heart strings moving. You find what gets them emotionally committed to your company. And this can be different for the people that you're selling to. It can be different for a planner. It can be different for a bride or a groom. Um, I can tell when I get on the phone with a bride, um, they're probably making a little bit more of an emotional decision. They're thinking about their future. They're probably thinking about their future family. They're thinking about their current family, their parents. Um, and so you talk to them in a certain way. You hit on the things that are going to sell that person. The same thing with a guy. I was on a phone call with a guy today. He did not give a damn about any emotional, you know, uh, jargon at all. And I could tell pretty early this guy just wanted to get down to the numbers and I was able to sell him numbers wise. Just be like, you know, this is the value in what you're getting. If you do this, you save money long term. Go with a bundle. Don't go with, you know, a la carte items and got them to got him to upsell that way. Um, different things for planners. I would say find out what your planner is looking for. Again, going back to relationships with that planner and sell them on what they want. It's not always going to be, and it oftentimes isn't what the bride and groom want. A lot of times it has to do with the planner wanting to build their own brand as well. So that's the mindset that you have to find. Find what's going to strike them out, get them sold, and do it today. <laughs> um, another uh, kind of uh, couple things that you can do is giving people sweeteners. I would say this year I'm probably going to be a little bit more flexible with people in terms of like, Hey, you can sp spread out your payments a little bit more. Just the little things that make you seem 
uh, more saleable to the client. Uh, you don't have to pay for everything up front. Um, or, or if you do pay for everything up front, maybe I can break it into five or six payments. And typically I might only do two or three payments. Um, being a little bit more flexible around the edges, um, that can really go a long way. I would say uh, sweeteners like, hey, um, usually we pay for the first 100 miles of travel. I'm willing to pay for the first 200 miles of travel. Not necessarily putting a dollar amount to that, but you know what the dollar amount is. Um, and that could go a long way in you know, helping people want to book you and just incentivize them to want to book you quickly. Um, yeah, give extra attention to people reaching out to your brides and grooms, just extra touch points that make them feel like they're being served, whether they're in the booking phase or whether they're in the pre-wedding phase or post-wedding phase. You know, if you have more time, these are the basic things that you can be doing to both secure the work that, you know, hopefully you're going to be doing for them, uh, but then also potentially future work as well. So, Guys, hopefully this has been helpful for you. Hopefully there's a couple tips in here that you're going to take to heart and take into your wedding business so that you can really build a recession-proof business. I think a recession isn't necessarily something you have to be terrified of. Um, you know, 10 to 25%, that's a lot. That's just a lot of money. But at the end of the day, if you do a lot of basic things, you can still have a thriving business and honestly, set yourself up in a way that allows you to be ready for breaking out of that recession. So galvanize yourself a little bit, lock down. Um, guys, I'm not going to ask you to do much at the end of this podcast because uh, all you guys are probably on the Facebook group. You're probably following us on YouTube already. What I'm, I am going to ask you to do, though, is if you liked this podcast, you don't even have to give us a review. Just go on to wherever you're listening or watching this podcast and give it five stars. That really goes a long way in the algorithm, the podcasting algorithm. Uh, we show up when people type in wedding film, but not necessarily when people are typing in wedding video. And we'd like to populate a little bit more there. Your review helps us bump up there a little bit more. Guys, thank you so much for watching. We love you guys. Have a great week and good luck out there. We'll see you next time here on the Wedding Film School Show. Thank you.